Hey everybody, Eric Hayden here in the garden today. It's a pretty cloudy day, so I'm going to do a three-part series on the different rose beds and kind of go through what I have. I'll start with the most established beds. These were planted in the spring of 2017, so these are three years old and they're most um, mature of all of them. You'll notice the railroad ties, they were already there, so the prior owners had a garden here. Uh, so the soil was pretty decent. This is a Let Freedom Ring. You'll notice it's a little bit later of a bloomer in terms of some of the other roses I'll show you. Uh, so this probably won't bloom until the middle of May. Today is April 25th. Very nice pink rose. This is a firm. Um, this does get some issues with mildew and sometimes substance issues with the bloom itself, but it's hard to find a better, bigger pink rose. Really, really nice. I mentioned it's April 25th. Over the course of the next week to 10 days, these will be in peak bloom right here. Our peak for the whole garden is usually the middle, first or second week of May. This is crystalline. It um, is an older rose. It's been used in hybridization for a lot of different types of roses. It has some florist uh, traits. Um, you'll notice these very leathery, leather type of leaves, beautiful leaves. Um, this was used as a cross and Randy Scott, and you'll see those leaves show up again. It's a white rose, really, really nice. Um, it does tend to not want to bloom in, as a single stem rose, and that's what I mean by this. This is a single stem, one bloom to the stem. I had to disbud it, and if you've seen my prior videos, what I mean by that is it kind of blooms in clusters. You have one main terminal bud and side buds, and you'll want to disbud that pretty quickly if you want singles with this. And here's an example, terminal bud, and a side bud, you'll want to remove that. So crystalline is a nice rose. This is Marlin's Day, and if you think, you know, the leaves look like moonstone and the blooms look like moonstone, you're correct. Marlin's Day is actually a sport of moonstone. Um, moonstone's classified as a white rose, um, certainly has a hint of pink. Where Marlin's Day is different is it's much pinker. Uh, a sport differs, it's a genetic mutation. Um, it often grows similar to the rose it mutated from, but often the color is different. And I'll show you the example of that in a second. All those roses were on Fortuniana. This Jewel Grace is on Multiflora. It was the only rose I brought down from New York State. Not by design. I sold most of them when we moved down here in the winter of 2016-2017. But one didn't get sold or picked up, and that was Jewel Grace. So I kept it, potted it up, and brought it down here. Here's Zach Nobles. Uh, this is a good example of a sport. On the right is Let Freedom Ring. On the left is the sport. Sports tend to maybe not be quite as of, uh, aggressive in terms of growing. This Let Freedom Ring has always been taller than its sport, which is Zach Nobles. Uh, but the bigger difference is Let Freedom Ring is a red. Zach Nobles is an orange. Uh, so again, those are sports. Same year, again, spring 2017, planted this second bed. This was um, prior to that, that was centipede grass. So I dug that out and planted uh, Gemini. You can tell lots of buds coming along. Um, these very long stems are Hot Princess. I'm really excited about this rose this year. I haven't gotten a lot of great blooms on that uh, yet, but along the back side of this, the first bloom, you can see there's mostly just buds, but the first bloom is outstanding. You're not gonna get much better than this in terms of a bloom. I'm gonna make it bend a little bit so you can see it. That's Hot Princess, and that's why it's one of the top exhibition roses. You can see that spiral right there. Over here is Crescendo. It's kind of a rare exhibition rose in the sense that most exhibition roses um, have form, that's why they're an exhibition rose. And what I mean by that is this classic spiral shape with a point in the middle, a center. But they don't have fragrance. Well, Crescendo has both. And if you look carefully, the leaves and um, the coloring look similar to Gemini. And that's because one of the parents for Crescendo is Gemini. As I widen out, notice this rose here is smaller than the others. This is Sunny Sundays. It just got planted last year. Originally a moonstone was there and it died over the winter. So um, that one was planted in the summer of 2019. Veterans Honors looking really good. Little concerned with some dieback down lower on the canes, but I don't know if you can tell, but that's probably three times the size of a, a pencil uh, in terms of width. So those are huge canes. And the last one, 
um, that was planted spring of 2017. Again, this is year three, as Randy Scott. Uh, it's a white rose with a hint of yellow. It has um, parentage back to crystalline, so you'll notice those leather, leather type of leaves um, as well. So again, these were my first two beds. This is part one planted in spring of 2017. As we end part one, I'll go to the third bed that was planted in late summer of 2017. Um, these are not quite as big, but you can see they're certainly more established than the others. Uh, this is Silver Cream. That's a hybrid tea from John Smith. This is Ring of Fire. It's replacing St. Patrick. Um, I have not had luck getting that through a winter, even with our mild ones. Uh, I'm gonna try something down the road. Speaking of winners, this is Cajun Moon. Um, it is, um, it was on the market at the same time as Moonstone, but Moonstone was the one that was widely distributed. Um, it's more of a white, but you can see again, those leather type of leaves has the same parentage. It just does not have the wide distribution. I can't wait for this one. You don't, you can't beat those leaves and a big bloom on top. If we had a rose show, that's queen potential right there. Um, that one's looking great. I have a backup for this rose because I'm expecting it to die eventually. Notice this graph is really gnarly looking and just not looking good. Um, it really had a hard time after that first winter. We got down into the single digits and I was expecting it to die, but it's still kicking. So we'll see what happens. Marilyn Monroe, um, this also had trouble over the winter two years ago. So I replaced it. So that's why it's a little smaller. Uh, this is Baby's Blush. Um, almost every bloom of this has form. This is from uh, John Smith. I'd say the only downside to this um, is it's not super resistant at all. It's a great exhibition rose, but I mean, look at that center. You cannot beat that. Uh, but it does get black spot more prevalent than others. And as we end part one, this is Mr. Caleb. Uh, you can see one of the branches broke off in the wind the other day. This hybridized by Fred Wright um, and is outstanding red rose. So I'm gonna come around here to this side and it does not hold up as much in the rain as Veterans Honor. You'll notice some Botrytis uh, off to the left side of the rose. Um, that's what that brown um, spotting is. But look at that form. That's Mr. Caleb. So that's part one. Again, these two original beds were planted in spring of 2017. And then this last bed I just showed you, that was planted in summer of 2017. On part two, I'll go over some of the other beds that were planted in 2018. Thank you very much.